Hi, it's Carrie. In today's 5-Minute Friday, I'm going to go over some ways that you can use field descriptions and tags in PubMed. I've done another video in my PubMed series on using the field tags, but here I wanted to go into it in a little bit more detail and show you how I use them. So I'll do a couple of different examples, really none of them related to each other, but you'll get an idea for how you can use the field tags. They're located in the PubMed help guide, and I will put a link in the video description below. And if you click on any of the field tags, it will tell you what's involved in that field tag. So for example, text words, which is something we use a lot for systematic searching because it's very broad and sensitive. If you click on that, it will tell you that it is searching words and numbers in the title abstract, any other abstract, mesh terms, mesh subheadings, publication types, substance names, personal names as subject, corporate author, secondary source, comment, correction, other terms, and non-mesh subject terms, so author supplied keywords. And you can sort of look through these and just get a sense of what they're searching. I'll go back and there are some that I use a lot and there are some that I use not at all. Let me first show you how I would use affiliation. And I'll just use myself as an example. To use affiliation, you may need to pair it up with an author's name, which is AU. So I will just say price, C, AU. And there's no need to enter the full name. It truncates after the first initial. So it will catch other price, C, with different first names. But that's OK. And then. I want to say, and um, I've been at two places. I've been at Hopkins AD or Towson AD. So this is looking for publications under my name with these affiliations. Now, it's not a perfect match. It's not going to match the price to the affiliation, but it will work pretty well. You might get somebody who is a price on the publication, but is a different price, but there's somebody on the publication from Hopkins or Towson. And we get the results. Some of these are mine and some of these are not. So if you were looking for yourself, you could click the ones that are yours and do whatever you wanted to do with them. Another one I use quite often, I do a lot of bibliographies for people where the only information I am given is the author's name, a little bit of journal or citation information and kind of a topic. So I might do uh, the author name, author, and then I might type some of the title words that I know of and just put a TI, that's title tag on them. So TI is title words. I'll click search. I get 11, so I probably could have been more specific, but 11 is not too many to look through. Another one you can use that is really helpful is first author name, 1AU. So if I were looking for a publication from someone I knew but I couldn't remember the name, I might look up Mun Z, 1AU, so the first author. And I know that scoping was in the title somewhere, but that's all I can remember. I'll click search and I get three of those results. What else do I use a lot? Uh, journal can be helpful, so if we do JAMA, TA, that's journal. Don't ask me why it's TA, and we get a lot. So I guess you'd have to know what you were looking for in the journal, so maybe JAMA and what have they written about COVID. I'll do TW, text word, and we see a little bit about COVID published in JAMA. What else do I use? I don't really use language or last author name, although that could be helpful. Um, let's look at last author, last AU. So I'm familiar with some work by Dr. Needham. Last AU, we'll say critical care in the title, and we get eight results. So this is where Dr. Needham was the last author. You might try different variations and get 17 results. So depending on what you remember, or need about the article. We know about mesh terms, so you have to look up the mesh terms in the mesh database. You can't just make terms up. But when you do that, I'll just go to PubMed. Um, I have it split screen. Let me go to mesh database. 
So if you were to look up a term, you can pick the term and you can add to search builder and it comes across with that field tag already. There are different ways that you can apply the mesh term. So MH is also acceptable. So we'll do that. Same thing. I don't really use these other ones, other term page. PMID is the PubMed ID. You'll see that here. So if you had this, I think you can just paste it without the tag and it's smart enough to know what you want. Yeah, but maybe you wanted to be more specific. You can say PMID. There it is again. This looks a little different just because I have it in split screen, but it's the PubMed you all know and love. Another one you can use is subset. Let me click on subset. Subsets have changed a lot in recent years. There used to be multiple subsets and now there aren't that many. Um, so let me show you how a subset works. The one I know and use is a systematic review subset from the National Library of Medicine. So you type systematic SB and you get the results that meet the criteria for systematic review, which would be equivalent to checking this box. You can Google systematic review subset PubMed and it will tell you what it's searching so that it's not blind. It's very transparent. So this is this was last reviewed in 2019. They stopped modifying these and stopped maintaining them, but I still find it really useful. As far as pharmacological action and supplementary concept go, those are things I'm probably going to look up in the MeSH database and not necessarily use right from here because you have to know what those are and they can be complicated. And the last thing I might use is title and abstract. So if you do a search with TW and it's really broad and very sensitive, you can dial it in a little bit by doing title abstract. I'll just show you the difference. Cystic fibrosis, TW, I'll make this bigger again. We get 56,028 results versus cystic fibrosis, TIAB. We get 49,393 results. And that's because TW and TIAB search different metadata fields in the record. And remember that we're never searching the full text. We're searching what's available in the record, which is pretty limited. So I hope that helps you use field text to your advantage to be a better searcher. If you're looking for things in PubMed, good luck. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.